Hey, how you doing today? I am Tequila Coleman. In today's video, we're going to talk about why is God allowing so much delay? So this video, it is inspired by a comment um, that was left on one of my videos. And I'm doing this video because a lot of God ordained spouses, a lot of God's children, a lot of God's people, they have the wrong view of God. And this is why I'm doing this video, okay? A lot of people think that it is God who just sitting up there allowing delays, you know, putting all this pressure and hard work on a God ordained believing spouse, but taking it easy on the prodigal. Let me tell you this before we get into this question. If you don't spend time in your word to understand God, if you don't spend time reading that word to understand this process, because this process can't be found in the Bible, you're going to forever be confused. You're going to always be misunderstanding God. OK, we have to spend time in the word so that we have a better understanding of the God we serve. OK, when I understand the God I serve, I understand why he is directing me this way. OK, so let's get into this um, question. Well, this was a response. I, I, I'm assuming I must have comment um, and she replied back to my comment. But this is what it reads. It says, God knows what they will do, and he also knows how to pressure someone the way a Jonah had no other option. Why is he, talking about God, why is he allowing so much delay? I feel betrayed, honestly, because he's been so strict and straight with me, but the prodigal gets to do all sorts of things and waste all this time on this satanic distraction, while every time I try anything, the window the windows, doors, and peepholes would close shut immediately. Or I get some, I get so pressured on my conscience, I have the choice between instantly insanity or death, or to choose what he revealed and obey or sacrifice my will. Where is his love for the standing spouse in all of this? Where is our protection? It doesn't feel fair at all, not in the slightest. Exactly. When I don't spend time with God, it's going to feel unfair. When I don't know God, I'm going to feel like God is, is just requiring all for me, all this work on my behalf and taking it easy on a prodigal. I don't understand God. What is going on here? So let's talk about this. Okay, now I want to go back to your comment. Why is he allowing so much delay? Let's talk about it. Is God allowing that delay? Or is it our lack of understanding that we live in a world where there's a real God, not, not God, but there's a real devil, right? Lowercase g God, okay, who has his agents on assignment dressed as wolves in sheep clothing who are posing as prophets on YouTube, but they really false prophets. They really wolves in sheep's clothing giving prophetic words, right? But, and, and, and because we don't know this, right? We listen to the prophetic word. We come into agreement with it. And that's where the delay comes in at because you just came into agreement with something that was demonic that came from divination. OK, you just gave the enemy legal right to go ahead and attack, to go ahead and create delay, to go ahead and set up traps. Right. The uh, delay is also coming from you, the God ordained believer spouse, because when God tell you to pray, OK, you already know your response. Right. Many. I still get questions on tequila. Why do I have to pray? How long do I need to pray? Do I need to pray every day, tequila? You see, so. We have yet to understand prayer, why God is calling you to pray. We, When God tells you to fast, we give God all the reasons why we can't fast. Well, God, I'm sick. Well, God, no, I need to take my medication. You know, so we can become our own delay by just being disobedient to the instruction God has given us, right? God can also tell you, start healing. But, you know, you can be turned a blind eye to the very issue that God is telling you to heal from. You know, you can have a self-sabotaging spirit within it. You can have fears or insecurities going on inside of you. And again, God can tell you, I need you to work on that again. You know, we'd like to tell ourselves, when well, I'm healed, I'm okay. I've done the work when really, no, you haven't, <laughs> you know, like you probably started the process, but you haven't fully healed. Right. And so whenever God give us instruction and we refuse to do it, or if we start it only to never finish it, that's delay. That's delay. And then the other delay is coming from the prodigal. 
because this person is, is not in their right mind. This person is bound by the enemy, right? So again, you know, delays are not coming from God, okay? God is the one who told you, you have a God-ordained marriage promise, right? He's not going to tell you this only to delay you in it. That don't even sound right. The delays is coming from what we refuse to do. It's coming from our own procrastination. It's coming from our own fears, insecurities, our own, you know, self-sabotaging, you know, ways, you know, how it shows up. It's coming from the enemy, the witches, the warlock, you know, it's coming from the people you have around you who will, who tell you the opposite of what God said. Now they pulling you into doubt and confusion. It's coming from the, the prodigal. It's coming from every angle, but it's not coming from God. Okay. Let's continue to read. You said, I feel betrayed. Honestly, see right there, you feel betrayed. So you have a wound that God is waiting on you to heal from. So when are you going to start healing from this betrayal spirit? I feel betrayed, honestly, because he's been so strict and straight with me. So you feel betrayed by God. You feel betrayed by God. I feel betrayed, honestly, because he's been so strict and straight with me. But the prodigal gets to do all sorts of things and waste all this time on satanic distraction. While every time I try anything, the windows doors and peepholes would close shut immediately or I get so pressured on my conscience I have the choice between insanity or death or to choose what he revealed and obey sacrifice my will okay so you see how you said how when you try to do your will how your conscience kick in you, you, you hear that see prodigals that they don't have a conscience you see the difference they don't have a conscience okay you know the right thing to do. That's why your conscience kicking in. That and that's also why God is 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 pricking your sphere because He's like, you know, you know better. He said, you know better, right? You can hear from God. Prodigal, some of them can hear from God. Others, you know, they they block out what God is trying to say to them. And then the other 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 prodigal, they just they can't hear from God. They don't even know God. They hate God. Okay. They far from God. So you expecting for God, you expecting for a prodigal to hurry up and just be, become obedient to God when they don't even know God. They don't even like God. They have a, they have, they have a, a hateful heart towards God, but you expecting a prodigal who heart is hateful towards God because this prodigal is might be blaming God for how his mother or father treated them, right? You expected for this person to now just all of a sudden just become obedient because God told you you have a God-ordained love story? Come on now. We got to look at this thing from all angles. No, this prodigal is not going to just all of a sudden just become obedient and just hurry up and get in alignment with this God-ordained love story. No, this is why God tells the believing spouse, stand in the gap and pray. While you are standing in the gap and praying, God now gets to um, encounter this prodigal. He gets to encounter him and bring correction. He gets to encounter them in a dream. He gets to send people across their path to confirm what this prodigal already know in their spirit. He's given them revelation that God is real. And this stuff takes time. Okay? And God doesn't betray any of his people. We are the ones who betray God. We are the ones who don't keep our own word with God. We are the ones who spend in God's faith. We are the ones who turn our back on God. Scriptures say, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. I always stay by your side. We don't betray God. Uh, God doesn't betray us. We are the ones who betray God. Soon as we pray and, and, may and say all these lies, okay, God, if you bless me with this, I'll do this. I'll live right. I'll do all these things. But soon as he bless you with it, what do we do? We forget about God. We forget about him. And we go back into our sin. We go back into our dietary. Come on now. You said, where is his love for the standing spouse? Again, if you're not reading the Bible, you would not even be able to identify God's love. You said, where is his love for the standing spouse and all of this? Where is our protection? Your protection is when you open up your mouth and you use your authority and you pray the protection scriptures over your life. See, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. When I don't know 
What I don't understand my authority, what I don't understand, how do I come up under the protection of the Lord? When I don't, I don't know these things and I don't understand these things, then therefore I'm going to have a wrong view of God. And let me tell you something. Even when you don't even know these things, God still been protecting you. God didn't allow the enemy to take your life. The fact that you are able to comment up under this video lets me know that God has protected you from things you didn't even know was coming your way. Okay, so we need to we, we need to start appreciating God. We need to start okay thanking God for the things that we haven't even seen that was coming our way. Right, that God has blocked. All right. So my advice to you and whoever else feel this way, spend time in your word. Before you put your mouth on God and you start believing that God has betrayed you and you start, you know, thinking God is a God who is very strict with the believing spouse and just, you know, taking it easy on a prodigal. I need you to get in your Bible and I need you to read your word. I need you to get an understanding of, of God. I need you to understand his character, his nature, his heart for you. You need to understand what does it mean to be standing for a prodigal and what is the mindset of a prodigal so that you can stop expecting just because God revealed to you that you have a God ordained marriage promise. You, you, now you assume that this prodigal is now just about to just walk himself or herself out of the kingdom of darkness and hurry up again in alignment with this God ordained love story. It don't work that way. If this person been through hell and back and they don't like God, they hate God. Come on now. God got a, that means that person got a hard heart. So that means God now got to encounter this person. God got to soften this person's heart. He got to deliver them out of the hand of the enemy. This person need deliverance. Okay. So let's listen. Before y'all start commenting, make sure you have a right, the right perspective of God. Okay. Make sure you have the right perspective of God before you just start commenting your feelings. Okay. Open up that Bible and you spend some time in that Bible to get to to get a better understanding of God. OK, because God will not. Yes, he's going he gonna to require some things from you. Yes, he's going to give you some instruction that you need to follow if you want his love story. God's not going to just hand you this love story and you ain't put in no work. You still the same person. No. Scriptures say if any man be in a Christ, he, he is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. God is looking to see, are you doing, are you implementing, um, engaging my principles? Do you even know me or do you just want what's in my hand? Okay. So before we start thinking God is this way, let's spend time in the word and get to know who God is for ourselves. Let's get to, you know, get a level of understanding of God's heart before God give you what your heart desire. God said, I want you to give me what my heart desire. And guess what God's heart desire? His heart desire for you to get to know him as father, as mother, as your provider, as your healer, as your way maker, as your vindicator. That's what God desire. All right. So with that, I am Tequila Coleman. I'll talk to you real soon. Take care.